So I didn't just get that feeling once, I got that feeling 50 <laughs> times over. And that's where that phrase came from. It was somewhere between gig four and five. I was on a train and I was writing in my journal, <laughs> journal advocate, uh, I want more, I want more, I want more. I want more of this feeling of just passion and power and just all of the things that live music gives me. Hi everyone, welcome back to We Plug Good Music TV. My name is Ayo and you're tuned into our brand new series titled Behind the Music, where we'll be speaking with some of our favorite artists and they'll be taking us behind the scenes with their latest releases. Today, we have UK singer and songwriter Marie Naffa and we'll be talking about her latest single, I Want More. Here we go. Marie, welcome again thank you very <laughs> much thank you for having me um thank you for coming down um so i know that we we tried this before and we, this is our second time hopefully it goes smoothly um and we have an even better conversation than we did the, the first time it's a tough act to follow well, but i back us, I yes. back us. <laughs> <laughs> okay so um before we usually start we'd like to do a quick check-in so how are you? How's your year going so far? What has been happening? I'm very well. Thank you very much for having me and also for We Plug Good Music sort of constant support as well. Awesome. It's really means the mo like so much to me as a kind of unsigned artist. Thank you. Um, this year has been great. I'm releasing lots of new music. I'm currently halfway through my second EP yeah. and after you know the last couple of years we've had it's just been such a pleasure to kind of connect with people over releasing music again yeah. so awesome. yeah and awesome. i'm here for the second time yes. like what <laughs> more could i want <laughs> all good all around um so yes we're here to talk about i want more um but before we dive into that properly um for people that may not know who you are or are just you know finding out about you for the first time um could you give us a bit of a backstory as to who Marie Nafa is and how we got here? Yeah, of course. Um, I won't take too long with my life story, <laughs> but I'll try and keep it concise. I um, am a primarily London-based uh, singer-songwriter and I have been writing music since I was about 14 years old. I fell in love with the idea of being able to express yourself through music. I then got addicted to gigging really intensely around the London music scene. And I've just been honing my sound for quite a long time now. And this is the second small record I've released um, so far. So I'm really inspired by journeying and traveling, um, as I'm sure we'll talk about. Um, yeah. And my last EP was inspired by a road trip that I took around the west coast of America. And this is inspired by uh, a lot of train trips I took around the UK as okay. well. Awesome, awesome. So is the third EP also going to be something to do with travel? Maybe you've got, you have done the US, you've done the UK. Where might the where? third one be? I don't know. Any excuse to go on another holiday, yeah. I think that's... <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why not? Um, so we are eventually going to get to I Want More, um, mm. but you have literally just put out a new single and a new video this week uh, for Runaway With Me. Um, so let's get into that a bit. Um, what is that song about? That song, I've been saying to people, it does what it says on the tin, really. Okay. I... Uh, wrote it about wanting to essentially run away and escape with someone that I was close to. And it's about, I want to give people the feeling of calling up someone you love and going, let's get out of here. Mm. And that's all it is. It's yeah. really simple and I really love it. It's really based on classic songwriting that I listen to. I listen to a lot of Lou Reed and the Kinks okay. and old school sounds. Yeah. So it's probably some of my most classic songwriting okay. to date. Okay, awesome, awesome. And um, just by way of comparison, right? So um, what would, well, what was the difference between putting Runaway With Me together versus I Want More, which we are going to dive into a bit more? I think I thought about Runaway With Me 
for a long time before actually executing it all in song and in the studio. It came to me more so in fragments than I want more. They both had a fairly similar process in that they are both lifted from notes that I took in my journal, which is the way I write with most of my music. It's often very retrospective. It's yeah. taking ideas that I've written down that aren't necessarily fully formed songs, but they're lines or you know words or sort of experiences or feelings that I might want to come back to when I'm in the studio. So actually they had a fairly similar similar path. Okay, okay. So I know that you talk about your journal and the last c conversation we had, you know, we had a, a nice chat regarding journals in general. So I'll bring that question up. I love that. Um, so I'm glad that made the cut. So I'll come <laughs> back to it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I don't journal, um, but I hear that it's a good thing to do and it can really change your life. And so for those of us that don't journal, um, what one thing has it done for you? And you know, why should we or why might we get involved? I think, and I'm going to do the same caveat that I did last time because, you know, I don't want everyone to think I'm super earnest, but I will firstly say that obviously these sort of creative processes aren't for everyone. I'm not going to sit there and say journaling is going to change all of your lives, but I definitely felt for me, it's really helped unlock ideas because it's giving yourself a moment and a pause to reflect and I think because life is so fast paced and you've got so many distractions all the time. Sometimes having those moments to just think, okay, this is the idea I have, what do I want to say? And having the permission to just sit and write and express yourself without any kind of having to share it with anyone. Yeah. I found that very useful. And so I tend to do that every morning okay. and most of the time it's not profound at all um, <laughs> but i like looking back on them and then seeing you know how i was feeling and i think it's that honesty in journaling that yeah. you get which I, I really like awesome awesome thank you for that so um we're gonna jump into i want more now um while while you just said that run away with me felt like more your your most classical song 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 writing um for i want more you have called it your frankest song writing so in your own words what is i want more all about what's that song trying to capture so i want more is basically a song about trying to chase a feeling of electricity and excitement. I wrote it sort of as a product of being quite bored indoors, um, as a lot of us, I'm sure, experienced as well during the lockdowns. And for me, I was desperate to get back out there and actually play live music for me. That was the, that was the feeling I had. I wanted to go out and be back on stage because for me, that is the feeling where I feel most alive. Yeah. And I think I wanted to make a song that was capturing that feeling of trying to chase that excitement, but also it can apply to lots of different things. Okay. Yeah. So, um, well, let's go this way. So um, the song speaks about wanting more, wanting to feel alive um, and you just touched on what, what sparked that want for you. So um, what did it feel like the first time you were able to get on stage and you were able to have that more that this song speaks to? So it felt, oh, I can't swear, I won't swear. <laughs> amazing. It felt amazing. I had that feeling very, very intensely for myself because last year, June 21st, when the restrictions opened in the UK, I took myself around the UK and played 50 gigs in 50 days. Awesome. And 
so I didn't just get that feeling once I got that feeling 50 <laughs> times <laughs> over and that's where that phrase came from it was somewhere between gig four and five I was on a train and I was writing in my journal <laughs> journal advocate uh, I want more I want more I want more I want more of this feeling of uh, just passion and power and just all of the things that live music gives me yeah yeah definitely definitely um staying with live music um what are your tour plans for the year or um are there any like kind of like live gigs coming up for you you know where and how can people get to see you live Brilliant. Love that question. That wasn't in the last interview and I'm very happy about that because a live show is always really good fun and I'm not just saying that because that's my gig but um, <laughs> we've got a really nice community feel at my shows and it's something that is incredibly special and I don't take for granted. So I have a full band show at St Pancras Old Church, which is one of my favourite venues in London mm -hmm. and that's on the 22nd of April, it's mm -hmm. a Friday night and that will be celebrating a lot of the songs that we've put out uh, this year. Yeah. And I'm also playing a community sessions gig um, in Finsbury Park, which is on the 15th of May, and that is just an acoustic okay. uh, session set. Nice. So depending what you're in the mood for, yeah. um, or come to both, they're, <laughs> they're so, good fun. So like, so you you have quite quite a bit of time to like plan these two, gigs out right and one one is a full live band one is more stripped back um so how do you map that out like do some songs fit more with, with a live band versus strips and like you know how do you make that choice as to which songs go where mm, that's a really good question i feel that how i write I always like my songs to have the ability to be stripped down into their acoustic form because that's how I started. I started just girl and guitar yeah. doing my thing and for me I feel like it makes a really good song if you can just pick up a guitar and yeah. sing it okay. and don't get me wrong, the full band shows are so <laughs> much fun because you've got all these people doing loads of the work for you. Yeah. but. I love that intimacy that you can get. I love watching shows that are just uh, a vocalist and guitar yeah. as well. I think it creates a whole other feeling. So they're different experiences, but mm. I, I like both. Awesome, awesome. So, um, I, so I put this down, let me get to it. So um, I Want More speaks about wanting more, wanting to feel alive. One Away With Me speaks about craving e e escape. Um, but like those, those two feelings or, or those two themes feel quite co connected. Um, what's the link there? I think it's something I often write about, which is escaping the mundane. I think I spend a lot of time thinking how you can add more sparkle to the dust and I think that's a feeling that resonates with a lot of people and I like the the way that a lot of these songs can apply to different people and different situations as yeah. well um, whether it's professional or romantic or you know personal in, in some way uh, so I would say that's probably the main theme and continues to be a theme in a lot of my work yeah okay um, so let's um, let's go into one of the things that struck me with I Want More, um, you were asking your fans and your listeners, um, you know, what they want more of in 2022. So for yourself, um, outside of live gigs, That's <laughs> what did you want more of? for this year when you came into it and um are you getting more of that 
So I wanted more spaghetti and I wanted more, and I definitely got more of that. No, I'm joking, I'm sorry. I've got to not do sort of stand up, I'm really sorry. I'm a very serious artist to those watching at home. I, this is gonna sound a bit corny, but I really, really wanted more connection with people. I actually became very disenchanted with the digital world and actually, it's a boring thing to say because I think there's also so many positives yeah. that can occur in the digital world. Like we wouldn't have met if it weren't for the digital True. world. I wouldn't yeah. have had so many of the fans I have across South America who are, just would have never come across my music if it weren't for the internet and social media. Yeah. And you know, it's so nice hearing how my songs resonate with them. But on the other hand, it can sometimes feel a bit one-sided and I feel like having conversations with people or playing to them and then hearing their stories, which was why I went out and did the 50 gigs in 50 days. I got to go to my fans and friends' homes and yeah. see their world. And it wasn't just broadcasting and broadcasting, it was a two-way conversation, which I yeah. think music should always have. Yeah. And um, So yeah, I think connection. What about you? So yeah, I think, um... I have had more time to think about the this question, and to be fair, I said this the the first time. Um, I just I want more time, so more time to spend with God and more time to spend with my wife. Um, those are the two things that that keep coming to my mind in terms of in terms of what I want more. But as the year ha has kind of Well, as the year, as the year has kind of gone on, mm. I find that I'm feeling very overwhelmed, mm. and so you want less. <laughs> <laughs> well, more of like more of nothing, if if that is a right word, but like just m maybe more of a pause and mm, just like mm. yeah, because. Um, like more so than previously, I, I'm feeling very overwhelmed a lot of the time. Mm. So um, maybe I want more respite from like work or like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think that makes total sense as well because these songs were born after you know, two years of, you know, the pandemic as well. So it, it yeah. was, couldn't be more opposite to this idea of there was so much going on. Exactly, and so, yeah. Yeah, it's actually sort of high intensity <laughs> asking for more now. I get it. That's really interesting. Though. Um, so the chorus of the song, um, it, it ends with a, a very hopeful line um, that really sticks with me where you say life can be bigger than this. Um, so how did that line come to you? Because great line, um, but like, um, what does that line mean for you? I think that line saves the song from being too depressing and too sad. <laughs> I think it sort of is the, is the action point for the listener to go, actually, what am I gonna do to make my life bigger, make my life better? And I always try and tread that line a bit between melancholy and hopeful because yeah. I think otherwise it's a bit sort of... <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really glad you like that line. Yeah. I like that line as yeah. well. A lot of people have said that they like that line in particular. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So from the line that sticks with me to, the, to, to a line that you have called or you have said is one of your favourite lines in the song, um, you say plug my eyes back into their sockets. So um, can you unpack what, you know, um, why, why, why that line is your favorite line, you know, and you know, like what are, what are the themes that like, that make that line pop? So I'm glad you came back to this one as well, actually, <laughs> but I have always been fascinated about 
wordplay in my music and I have had that since I was like I said I've been writing since I was 14 and I think I remember last time I told you a story about one of the lines that I'd written which was my first incorporation of wordplay <laughs> which said the only male voice is your voicemail and I remember being like oh I've smashed it that's so good but I like to think my wordplay got a bit better, but I like the way that in different contexts words can sound differently or um, mean different things, essentially. And so this idea of plugging your eyes back into your sockets, but also giving that image of electricity yeah. was exactly what I wanted to create because it's this idea of electricity running through your veins. Yeah. And on top of that, my experience was very linked to live, which does have a lot of electricity, there's a lot of cables, there's amps, there's wires. And so for me, that was just a nice, hopefully subtle nod to, yeah. to it. But Awesome, yeah. awesome. So it's, it, well, so I don't know how much, well, you can tell us, but like, you know, how, how, like, how much thought goes into that line that, you know, that, that seems to have like a double meaning to it. Like, so I guess what I want to ask is do you write do you write the line out and then see how it speaks to these two themes that run through the song or like is that is that the plan from the start That's yeah that's an interesting question I would say Often you can't really force these too much. I've actually tried doing that before. I actually did that with I Want More. I tried a whole alternative verse that okay. actually I tried much harder and it was just a bit too labored. And I think okay. you can tell. And the way I write, the music and the lyrics have to balance each other. You can't have one take all the attention and yeah. take all the focus. And I sometimes think if you're trying too hard with your lyrics, you can confuse the listener a bit or you can distract the listener and so what you want is you want this kind of you can have those hopefully quite subtle nods to those feelings but you're not spelling it out so yeah, you're yeah. distracting the listener but they the good ones i think or the ones that i'm most happy with come quickly uh, but yeah okay awesome awesome um so we briefly touched on the creative process for I for I want more and also for run away with me um, but um, am I right in saying that you worked with Stephen Griffiths Griffiths and Ian Barter on both of the songs that's correct okay. yeah and so can you tell us a bit more about you know what you know what that process was like in terms of working with these two people yeah. And like, you know, who are they to you, obviously? <laughs> yeah, amazing. They are both incredible talents in their own right. Um, I got in touch with Stephen because I had pretty much three quarters of these songs done. I had them demoed and I was just really keen to get a second musical opinion on them. It's not something I'd ever done before. I don't do a lot of co-writes, but it was important that these songs were as strong as they could be and I'm always keen to be progressing as a writer and so it was really nice to go and work with Stephen and for him to honestly say let's move this or do this and it was mainly a structure thing yeah. and um, he believes very strongly in the middle eight which I like very much in songs where it changes just before the last chorus yeah. and a lot of people scrap those and he said no no have faith but keep those in <laughs> and then Ian Barter is just a sensational producer and we have a lot of fun working together as well in his studio he has worked with some amazing artists including Paloma Faith and nice. he went on tour with Amy Winehouse and he just really understands big vocalists and yeah combines what I really want in production which is this quite classic sound with some elements of electronica but without yeah. going too far down that way and it's really really a dream to work with people that understand your vision which is really nice. Awesome, awesome. So we are going to talk about the video for I Want More. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, But this question ties into both 
visuals mm -hmm. for, uh, for I Want More and for Runaway With Me. So um, you have tagged them official visualizers versus the normal calling it a music or calling them music videos. Um, what's the reason for the distinction? I thought you were going to take this question <laughs> out. You knew it, I knew it. I'm going to keep to my answer. I'm going to keep to my answer because for people sitting at home, you asked me this question before and I said, you know, well, I'm actually not very sure. I don't, <laughs> I don't really know. But I will stand by my sort of slightly far-fetched idea of why I went down the line of, of visualizer because I think there's something slightly softer about a visualizer and it gives you this idea that it's still secondary to the song okay and that's how i feel with all of the stuff i feel like it's so important having visuals and you know the photographs and the story but i like the idea that you can have multiple visualizers so okay. if you know someone was listening to i want more and they said i have this great idea yeah instead of being like this is the official music video you can't make another one it gives you the nice thought that maybe someone could go yeah. down a different different way but honestly i don't know and if anyone knows at home i would love to know but it seems like a lot of people are doing that at the moment i think also another thing i would add is that as people are so used to consuming visual content now as verticals at you know because of tiktok or instagram and yeah. things like that things are shorter so often visualizers are not the full length of the song it's more like an advert for the feeling of a song yeah. so i think that probably plays a big part in it as well awesome awesome so how did the video or how did the visualizer for <laughs> i want more come about and how does it speak back to the song itself so i worked with some great people on the i want more video on a very cold day just after <laughs> Christmas I remember it well and it's based again on this idea of journeying and travel I spend a lot of my time on a train in this video <laughs> and it cuts between the verses which are sort of I suppose I'm cut lots of different times on train platforms and it's meant to indicate this idea of repetition and boredom that I was feeling that I explain in the verses yeah. and then the choruses I'm in front of a green screen which is fabricating dreamscapes and dream imagery which is meant to just be this idea of imagining the life that's bigger and the excitement and then at the end of the song it closes by the green screen dis disappearing and it's yeah. this idea of the big reveal that it's actually all just in your head. <laughs> um, but I loved it and yeah. I, I, it was nice. It's a simple concept, but I think it gets the message across and the feel of the song, which yeah. I think for all these visualizers videos, it's really important to get that yeah. right. Awesome. So um, we'll just jump to the visuals for Runaway With Me. Um, I read in one of your captions that it was filmed wild storm <laughs> Eunice was going wild so like yeah. like okay so one how how did you guys get through that and like what was that process like we got incredibly lucky with storm <laughs> Eunice actually because it made for a much more interesting music video I worked with Holly Morrison who is an amazing filmmaker and a really good friend of mine she yeah. did a lot of uh, my last music videos uh, for my first EP and was the friend that I went around the west coast of America with as awesome. well and she's really brilliant but we had not very much time during Storm <laughs> Eunice to shoot something and I said to her look we've just got to capture a feeling in this video I don't want a big fancy narrative I want to get that feeling of escape and that oh, feeling basically yeah. and she said I kind of know how to do that I think yeah. we're just going to put you out in the rain oh wow and <laughs> it was so funny the day before we thought oh, it was going to be sunny we'll get amazing light on things and then actually what happened is it gradually got more and more stormy and this made for incredible cinematography so yeah. actually it's just me doing a lot of wafting <laughs> the, but people have responded so well to it actually I think people like this 
element of my personality coming through as yeah. well because there's a bit yeah. of silliness in yeah. it as well and there's some incredible behind the scenes which I will be revealing on my social media <laughs> of me being a dork essentially but um, yeah awesome awesome so um, you mentioned how people have been taken to the to the songs quite well um, and just from a from a critical acclaim perspective i know that i want more got praise from the independent from bbc introducing line of best fit and you know with runaway with me that was also premiered with what wonderland right so you know what you know or how does that how does that make you feel and you know like what does the whole reception for these new pieces of music i think it has been amazing to see the publications that i've dreamt of being in basically for so long feature my work i you know these are the kind of publications i'd stick on my fridge and go oh, one day i want to be in wonderland you know i want to be in line of best fit but the thing for me that has been so lovely and so warming is the continuous support I've had, especially from people like Rasheen at The Independent. She has playlisted a lot of my stuff. She has made me The Independent's you know, weekly spotlight artist. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the coming back, which I think is really, really important to indie artists because you don't feel like people are jumping on a wave or jumping yeah, on a bandwagon. Yeah. But then on top of that, these words that people are writing and that are taking the time to write about my music are really thoughtful yeah. and i there is nothing nicer than reading an amazing publication but also a really thoughtful critique on something you've made yeah. and i think in a world of regurgitated press releases and quite soulless writing yeah. i think it's yeah i'm really really lucky awesome 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 um Let's talk about Trains. So Trains is the upcoming EP from where these two songs or, or where these two songs will live. Um, can you take us a bit into what we can what we can expect from the EP um, and you know what what you want listeners to come away from when they hear it? I think the first thing to say is that even though the EP is called Trains, it's not about trains at all. <laughs> and the reason why it's called Trains, I think I touched on this earlier, is because all of the ideas that were born for this EP were born on a train somewhere. Yeah, so yeah. they were scribbled down, whether it's a title, whether it's a fragment of the songs, they were all in these moments where I was looking out of train window and thinking, oh, that that might be a good thing to write down or a good thing to have in a song and the process after that was a long one but they all started on a train and yeah. i really like that and yeah. on top of that it really informed the way we produce the track because i said i want people to be able to listen to these songs on trains or in car journeys or this feeling of kind of progressing forward and moving and traveling i i wanted it to be that feeling where you're sitting at a train and you're the star of your own movie and you're just yeah. going oh yeah i can listen i do want more or yeah i want to run away with so and so <laughs> you know so that's been really nice but yeah the next two tracks are again different in flavor i've really moved around the genres in this ep okay. and just kind of followed my gut a bit yeah. um they're Really exciting. I'm really, really excited about both of them, actually. I don't, I don't know how much I'm allowed to spoil, <laughs> but I hope there's something for everyone. Yeah. And I hope people can relate to these feelings, although they have come out of very p p sort of personal things for me. I hope people can take from these songs what they want and yeah, yeah get excited about the journey. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So our customary final question. Um, you can't mention I Want More and Run Away With Me, um, but for people that are just finding out about you for the first time and they want to go back and hear more, 
what three songs should they start with and why? Brilliant. I think, okay, so I can't do I Want More or Run Away With Me, but actually, side note, I would listen to those <laughs> because I am very, very proud of those. And I think as most songwriters, you kind of feel like everything you release is always a bit better than the last thing you release. So yeah. I think that, start that. No, <laughs> I would say, I have a song called The Cage, which a lot of people seem to really like. It seems to have an incredible amount of streams and has connected with people all over the world. Mm. And I wrote that as the title track to my Golden State EP, which was about the West Coast of America. Yeah. And it's, again, a similar theme. It's about getting out of the cage, whatever that is for you, whether for me it was getting out of the city, it was getting out of London and being on the open road, but it can be a mental state of getting out of your kind of mental cage, um, all sorts of different things. But it's really upbeat, it's really good fun. And that's probably one where I'd start. Yeah. I would also say if you were up for something a bit more chill, I think, in tone, uh, <laughs> there is a song called Cold Water, which I really, really like, okay. which I wrote actually for Holly, who uh, was my videographer who I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Uh, she got married last summer and okay. she asked me to sing at her wedding and I wrote uh, a big love song for her wow. and her new husband. So wow. awesome. if you are a romantic and you know you go you want to spend more time <laughs> with your wife, you should put on Cold Water and okay. that's a big old love song. For and sure. then there's another track which I released between the two EPs, which has been a, a really exciting conceptual kind of project for me, which was I released two songs with exactly the same lyrics, but with completely different production. And they were called Honey and Air. Yeah. And one is really optimistic and one is a bit more slow and acoustic and singer songwritery. So I think they're quite a fun, fun flavor yeah. of, of my work as well. But I think that a, thing that ties them all together is sort of an attention of I love lyrics I love writing I love imagery and wordplay but also I think my vocals stay the same kind of yeah. all throughout but I like to surprise people as we go along so I hope there'll be lots of more new things as well awesome awesome thank you so much for the chat and for the conversation um for the people, where can they find you? Where what, what's the socials, all that stuff? Where can they find you on the big bad web? On the big bad web, you can <laughs> find me. I am on Instagram as Marina for Music, and I am also braving TikTok, which is a very strange universe. It's chaos there. <laughs> um, I'm on Facebook. I'm even on Twitter. Uh, I have a website as well, and I also have a very dear to my heart mailing list as well, which I try very hard to give people recommendations of things I'm listening to as well as a bit of a, an insight into what goes on during my creative process as well. And I try not to spam too often, <laughs> uh, but yeah, come find me and also, you know, drop me an email or connect as well. I'm very into that as a thing. So yeah, if you haven't gone to sleep by my chatter <laughs> um, but thank you so much for having me i really really appreciate it awesome thank you so much thank you thank you